Then I saw a new sky and a new earth. For the former sky and the former earth had passed away. And they no longer existed any sea. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God, all arrayed like a bride, purified, and adorned for a husband. Oh, praise God. Brothers and sisters, me and my wife, we have two daughters. The eldest one is called Elisha. And the younger one is called Chanel. There is only about 18 months difference between the two of them. They both did very well at school. They are really blessed when it comes to studying. And when they finish school, they finish school passing with distinction. Now last year, the eldest one first did a year of service. So it happened that the youngest one caught up with her. And this year, they both enrolled at the University of Pretoria. The eldest one is studying theology. And the youngest one is studying marketing. Now suddenly this year, things are not working out as they used to. The eldest one has got less subjects. And she is still passing all her examinations with 80% plus. She just found us this morning and she said, yeah, I have just got my marks for another paper, I got 85%. Greek and Hebrew, no problem. The youngest one is doing marketing. She's got many subjects this year. And two of the subjects are called statistics and accounting. She has never done accounting or statistics before. And she is always busy studying. But she is not doing that well at university this year. From time to time, the older one would get to the younger one. And she would say, Chanel, come with me. I want to go play with, with the children. At the orphanage. Then the younger one must say, I don't have time, I must study. And it doesn't matter how hard my youngest daughter study. She is finding it very difficult at university this year. She is saying it is unfair. She says, Mom and Dad, it is unfair that Alicia has got so much time and that she is doing so well. And I am always studying. 
She feels that life is unfair. You know, even on this crusade field, there may be parents who lost a child. And they are battling with the thoughts. They are battling to come to terms with the fact that they've lost a child. They would be able to say it is unfair. It is unfair that I had to give my child away to the death. Maybe there are some of you who's lost a brother or a sister or a mother or a father. Maybe they were still young. And you will agree with me, you will say, but it's unfair. You know, when people from other religions come to Jesus, many of them are being persecuted by their family members. They would also be able to say, but it is unfair. It is unfair. I thought that when I received Jesus, that things would be easy. My brothers and sisters, life is unfair. Receiving Jesus as your Lord and Savior does not mean that you're going to be spared the hardships of this life. You see, the master of this world is Satan. And he is the reason why life is so unfair. And we need to guard ourselves against Satan. Jesus died on the cross. That is not fair. The time you got a hiding for something you did not do was unfair. The fact that you are poor is unfair. The fact that you don't have a motor car you can say is unfair. Maybe you say the fact that I don't have a full-time job is unfair. But brothers and sisters, I want to tell you tonight. I want you to listen to me carefully tonight. The best is yet to come. The best is yet to come. The best is yet to come. Yes, brothers and sisters, the best is yet to come. My brothers and sisters, this is not the best. Heaven is still to come. We read in Revelation about the new heaven and the new earth. And we are all on our way making our way to the heaven and that is the best that is still to come so I want to encourage you tonight when I say to you the best is yet to come we read in Romans 8 verse 18 for I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth being compared with the glory that is about to be revealed. I want to repeat that verse. For I consider that the suffering of this present time are not worth being compared with the glory that is about to be revealed. What we suffer on this earth is nothing in comparison to what's to come. The best heaven 
is yet to come. You see, heaven is a place where there is no tears. Heaven is a place of joy. The Bible says the roads of heaven are paved with gold. In heaven there will be no lack. There will be no sickness. There will be no death. There will be no need. We will be in the presence of God Almighty. Brothers and sisters, the best is yet to come. The best is yet to come. Tell the person next to you, the best is yet to come. Oh, hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Oh, what a wonderful way. To bring this message to you. The strange thing is this. That when you ask people who wants to go to heaven, you will be surprised to see that everybody raises their hands. Everybody on this crusade field tonight will raise their hand when I ask the question, do you want to go to heaven? But the strange thing about this is that in heaven we are going to be in the presence of God all the time. And the reality is that many people on the crusade field are presently never spending time with God. People don't pray. People don't go to church. People have not received Jesus. But if you ask them, do you want to go to heaven? They all say yes. I want to go to heaven. My question to you tonight is what do you want to do in heaven if you're not prepared to spend time with God now? Because when you're in heaven, you're going to be with God all the time. Let me tell you this. If you don't spend time with God now, you will not go to heaven. Yes, brothers and sisters, it will be unfair if after this message, you don't come and receive salvation and you don't go to heaven. Because tonight you are receiving the opportunity to make sure that you can also say the best is yet to come. Because you see only child of God and say the best is yet to come. You see a child of Satan can only say the worst is still to come. The worst is still to come. The hell is still to come. But we, we the righteousness of God, those who receive Jesus as Lord and Savior, can say notwithstanding what happens in this world, the best is yet to come. Oh, praise God. Somebody give me a hallelujah. Somebody give me a hallelujah. Oh, praise God. Oh, come around praise God. God. Hallelujah. You see, we have a choice to make. We can choose for Jesus. Or we can choose for Satan. We can choose for life. Or we can choose for death. We can choose to be with God in heaven one day. Or we can choose to be with Satan in hell. It is not difficult to understand. The gospel of Jesus Christ is easy. For even a child to understand. It's a matter of choosing who you want to serve. There is only one way to salvation. Brothers and sisters, there is only one way to salvation. And it's through Jesus. There is no other way. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And you hear me tonight. Nobody but no Nobody, but nobody, but nobody shall go to heaven without receiving Jesus. 
Jesus, Jesus as the Lord and Savior. Jesus is the master of prosperity. He is the master of life. He is the master of love. He is the master of forgiveness and good health. Satan is the master of lack. He is the master of misery. Unforgiveness, sickness, and disease. Notwithstanding the circumstances in which you find yourself tonight on this earth, I want to remind you if you are a child of God, the best is yet to come. Life is not over. Life begins when you accept Jesus. Life begins when you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Sometimes people say, you only have to receive Jesus, and then everything will be wonderful. Suddenly you won't have financial problems. Suddenly all your problems will be solved. My brothers and sisters, you, it can be like that. With God, all things are possible, but it may happen if you receive Jesus as Lord and but you never become rich. It can happen that you receive Jesus and you never drive a motor car. But brothers and sisters, I want to tell you this, that the best is yet to come. The best is yet to come. For God, all things are possible. And yes, brothers and sisters, God never intended for man to suffer. It is not God's plan for man to be poor. It is not God's plan for man to clone sleep hungry. It is not God's plan that you should be without a roof above your head. It is written in Jeremiah 29 verse 11. People on the crusade field, listen to what the verse Says. God says, I know, I know, I know the thoughts and the plans I've got for you. I know the thoughts and the plans. I've got thoughts and plans to prosper you. I've got good thoughts about you. I've got good plans for you. I don't have plans of evil. It is written in 1 John 4 verses 4. You are of God, my little children. Him that's within you is greater than him that's within this world. Brothers and sisters, God only has good plans for us. But the reality is people die. People get sick. We have poor people. Needy people. People have been persecuted for their faith. But I tell you tonight, notwithstanding, we are not from this world. We are only in this world. When you become a child of God, you become a citizen of heaven. And you just have visited to this world. The best is yet to come. The best is yet to come. Oh, praise God. Praise God. Assurance that the best is yet to come. You see, 2,000 years ago, a savior was born. 1 John 3, John 3, verses 16 says, For God so dearly loved and prized this world that he sent his only begotten son so that those who believe shall not perish but receive eternal life. Jesus did not have to come to this world. Jesus, Jesus did not have to come and die for his sins. 
Because Jesus was without sin. But Jesus took our guilt upon him. And he died on the cross. For our sins. So that those who receive Jesus. Can say the best is yet to come. I'm on my way to heaven. I know this old mama here. Yes. She had a pain in her back. Yes. And now after prayers, the pain has disappeared. How old is she? Testify. Jesus took my problems. But the pain that was in my back tonight it left me. It left me. I am healed now. I'm healed now. The market is gone. The pain has gone. Hallelujah. 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 Mama, come and stand here. Uh, Mama, I want to assure you, even though your children is not alive, yeah. the best is yet to come. Father, I pray tonight for this lady, Father, she doesn't know how old she is. But Lord, you know. Yes. Father, and you saved her for a night like this. That she could be healed tonight from that pain. She can share a testimony with the people. Father, I pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Mama. Uh, we have a few guru. I trust that the message blessed you today. And I know that God is knocking on your door today. Today is the day of salvation. Today you can come home. Today you can receive Jesus as Lord and Savior of your life. I want to invite you to say the following prayer with me. It is a simple prayer, but I guarantee you, if you pray this prayer with sincerity and honesty, Jesus is going to come into your life today. And Jesus is going to turn your world upside down. Let's close our eyes, and I want you to pray after me. Father, I am coming to you in the name of Jesus. Today, I'm asking you to save me. I'm confessing all my sins today, and I'm asking that you wash me in the precious blood of Jesus. Thank you, Father, that you are forgiving me now. I confess that Jesus is the Son of God. And I believe with my heart that he rose from the dead. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. If you just prayed this prayer, I want to guarantee you that you are now saved. And I want to encourage you to go and find a church where you can grow in faith. Be blessed in Jesus' name. Do something new in my life. Something new in my life. Something new. Something new in my life, something new in my life, something new.